All right, so uh, the, uh, our next speaker is Joshua Garcia. He got his PhD from uh, USC. Uh, for, uh, his advisor was Nino Medvedovich, who is an ISR um, faculty affiliate. And he's going to talk to us about exploiting uh, Android applications. So uh, it's great to start with a talk about legally attributing cyber attacks, because now I'm going to talk about creating cyber attacks <laughs> <laughs> automatically. So around late uh, 2015 to early 2016, the number of mobile devices exceeded the number of uh, desktop devices. And around the same time, there's been an explosion in the number of mobile security threats. So for instance, around that time, there were over 13 million mobile malware samples. And Android is the primary target of uh, mobile security threats. Uh, over 96% of those attacks um, are uh, geared toward uh, Android, way more than the other platforms combined. And one of the key attack vectors to, uh, to create those attacks uh, over it is the intercomponent intercomponent communication uh, mechanism of Android, uh, which is based on a distributed event-based mechanism called Intents. Uh, these are the Android event messages exchanged between apps. So for instance, you're seeing here uh, a photo app, and it wants to, for instance, share a photo that's just been taken with Facebook. So it sends an intent message over, and uh, this intent message can have a uh, Pay payload with a bunch of contents, including um, the action uh, sharing, for instance, the name of the picture, the location where the picture is stored on your device, for example. And so this uh, ICC-based or intercomponent communica communication-based mechanism or intent is used uh, to, um, to exploit a bunch of vulnerability types. Uh, three of them I'm going to talk about here, um, inter-process denial of service, fragment injection, and cross-application scripting. So in terms of the inter-process denial of service, um, it's pretty simple and straightforward. You have a malicious app on your phone, and there's a vulnerable app it wants to attack. Well, it's going to send that intent, and it's going to make it unavailable, uh, possibly by crashing the app. Fragment injection is another vulnerability type. Um, this uh, is an inter interesting example, because here the vulnerable app is Gmail. Uh, so for instance, you want to log into Gmail and uh, you don't know what the password is? Well, not a problem. If, you're, if the app is vulnerable to fragment injection, you send the right intent and you can log in. You can get to the emails, no password required. And in fact, Gmail has been vulnerable to this particular uh, type of vulnerability. So this last one is called cross-application scripting, um, or XAS for short. <coughs> And so here, uh, what happens is, at a particular injection point, if I supply a malicious URL, I could, for instance, uh, load up a fake fa Facebook page. Uh, you enter in your credentials here, I've stolen your password to Facebook. And all I have to do is supply uh, the right kind of attack intent to do that. So there's an important uh, distinction here to be made, and that's between uh, vulnerable and uh, and exploitable threats. So a vulnerability is a weakness, such as a bug or a flaw in a system, device, or service that can lead to failure to achieve security and privacy properties, whether that be confidentiality, integrity, availability, and so on. Exploitability, on the other hand, is about the extent to which a vulnerability can be successfully used by a malicious attacker, and that involves uh, different sets of properties including, is exploit code available? For example, can I just go to an online database, download the exploit, and run it? Or is it kind of hard to construct? Do you need to be a skilled attacker and actually sit down and manually code it, for example, yourself? And does the code work consistently? So will I be able to run this exploit and it will work pr pretty much every time? And so the key takeaway here is that not all vulnerabilities are exploitable. Not all vulnerabilities are created equal. Some are more important than others. So let's take this uh, XAS example, and how can I make this non-exploitable? Well, you can do something simple, for example, like uh, if this particular injection can only occur at certain points, like sometime in the past, or during some certain range of dates during the year. <clears throat> and so how do you determine whether or not a vulnerability is exploitable? Well, actually, the state of the art right now is just to go through this manual, painstaking task 
of figuring out how to write some code that's going to actually um, exercise that vulnerability and that can be time consuming and error prone. So of course it'd be really great if we can automatically identify exploitable vulnerabilities. It would be really great if we can generate exploits automatically. And that's for a variety of reasons. We'd be able to reduce spurious vulnerabilities so false positive vulnerabilities can be eliminated. We'd be able to prioritize bug fixes. So if you find a vulnerability and exploitable, you probably want to go fix those first. If you have an exploit, that's an input that can help you actually fix those bugs. And of course, it's an arms race, so you want to be able to stay ahead of those zero-day vulnerabilities or zero-day attacks. And so no approach exists that can perform automatic exploit generation for Android apps. And there's at least two key challenges uh, to making that happen. One, you need to be able to deal with that inter-component communication interface that Android provides. And you also have to be able to automatically assess whether or not you successfully exploited a vulnerability. So to do that, what we've done is we've created a technique called Letterbomb, whose goal is to automatically generate inter-component communication exploits for Android apps. And so one of the key points here is that we did this by combining static and dynamic analysis in a smart way so that we can combine the, uh, the particular advantages of both. There's three key ingredients to it. Uh, one is generation of those intents to execute those vulnerable statements. Uh, the ability to modify an intent so you can supply the attacker logic in an automated fashion. And the use of software test oracles, which are used to actually verify that exploitation was successful. So a uh, letter bomb uh, overall works like this. Given an Android app and the Android framework, uh, Letterbomb produces attack intents and those oracles in, term, uh, in terms of instrumentation and assertions. In the first step, Letterbomb identifies vulnerabilities and provides you with the vulnerable statements and modified intents that have the supplied attacker logic. Using that information, the attack intent generator actually produces the attack intents. Finally, the exploit oracle instrumenter takes the vulnerable statements, the app and the Android framework, and then produces those oracles. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail, show you some code, uh, and give you more of an idea about how Letterbomb works. Specifically, I'm going to do that in terms of the XAS vulnerability that we saw earlier. So to identify that vulnerability, what you need to do is identify the final injection point where, you, where the malicious URL uh, enters into the program. And we're going to track the data passed at that injection point to determine if it's received from an intent. Okay, so here's that code snippet again. So starting from this injection point where the URL is loaded, we're gonna follow the data that's passed into there. And first we'll notice, okay, it is extracted from an intent. We're gonna look at that intent. We're gonna see that it was actually received uh, outside of this particular component, uh, which uh, is shown here by this get intent API call. And, here, and based on that, we know that this XAS vulnerability uh, is, is in fact uh, potentially exploitable. So the next step here is to actually generate those attack intents. And so to do that, what we do is we start at that vulnerable statement we identified in the previous step. Uh, we perform an analysis that identifies the attributes necessary to execute that particular vulnerable statement. And we also provide mechanisms to supply the particular attack logic. So here we go, we just started with this uh, particular vulnerable statement. And first we identify that new URL uh, attribute here. It starts as empty, we'll supply one later. The expiration time needs to be greater than zero, so here we'll just set it to two. And uh, the action needs to be app wall. This is an ad activity, so the activity is intended to show some ads. And um, app wall just simply means we'll just let the ad use up your entire screen. And then we'll install a malicious URL, so this fake Facebook URL, for example. Finally, we need to generate those uh, oracles. We need to de successfully determine exploitation. And what we do is, uh, for each vulnerab vulnerability type, we provide a one-time <coughs> specification um, or oracle construction that, once produced, is reusable across all apps per vulnerability type. 
and there's two particular parts to that customized oracle. The instrumentation at the application or Android framework, and also a post-processing of the log so that we can assert whether or not the exploitation was successful. And so for this particular case, what we end up doing is we inject some code that determines when the page has loaded and then logs if we've successfully injected the malicious URL that we wanted to use for our attack. And then we post process to make sure that the log statement actually contains that URL. Okay, so now you have an idea of how Letterbomb works. Uh, the next question is how well it works. Well, it works really well, and hence why, um, and hence why uh, I wanted to show uh, some results. So we evaluate Letterbomb in terms of one, its ability to detect exploits, and also its ability to reduce the number of vulnerabilities that are uh, false positives or spurious. We also compared Letterbomb against um, a commercial tool uh, that's based on a research prototype. It's actually from IBM. Um, and we compared it in, in terms of its ability to detect vulnerabilities and its runtime efficiency. So in terms of its ability to detect exploits, you, you can see the results here for um, the three vulnerability types uh, you've seen earlier in this presentation. We show the number of exploits and the number of unique exploits. So um, there's unique exploits because you can actually, for instance, execute a particular vulnerable statement along multiple paths, for example. <clears throat> and what you're seeing overall here is that we've successfully identified over 180 exploits from 10,000 apps. These were exploits that the developers of these apps were not aware of before. We contacted them to confirm the vulnerabilities. Um, there have been a good number of fixes as well. And so, um, this, these are a sizable number of exploits also given that uh, exploits are very rare. They're much rarer than vulnerabilities, which are rare in and of themselves. So these are the results for uh, the reduction uh, of spurious vulnerabilities by letter bomb. Um, it's shown as a percentage here. So 100% means that uh, whatever <coughs> vulnerabilities you detected, um, they've all ended up being spurious. 0% means that uh, none of them are spurious. They're all actually, um, for instance, exploitable. And so here what we find is that for 10,000 apps, um, and by the way, these apps are all from Google Play, um, randomly selected, uh, we can reduce the number of spurious vulnerabilities from <coughs> by 24 to 96%. So that's a huge reduction. Finally, these are the results for um, Letterbomb in terms of the comparison with uh, IBM Application Security on the Cloud, or IBM Ask for short. And so what we're showing here is a percentage of vulnerabilities identified per vulnerability type. Uh, here we selected 40 apps um, where the vulnerabilities are known. Uh, we couldn't do more than 40 because it costs uh, over $400 per scan uh, of the IBM tool. And so uh, what we found is that a letter bomb can obtain a 33 to 60% improvement in terms of vulnerability detection over IBM Ask. And recall that um, Letterbomb is the first technique that actually automatically produces exploits and detects them for, um, for Android. And so IBM Ask doesn't actually do that. Okay, we also did an efficiency comparison of Letterbomb with uh, IBM Ask. And here what we're finding is that uh, in terms of uh, efficiency, letter bomb is six to, six to 13 times faster. And so actually letter bomb can do its analysis on an average between two to four minutes. So what I've shown you is letter bomb. It's the first uh, technique that performs automatic exploit generation um, of uh, exploits along the intercomponent communication interface of Android apps. Uh, it can significant, significantly reduce the number of uh, spurious vulnerabilities um, in an analysis. Uh, it's also six to 13 times faster than um, the state of the art uh, while detecting 24 to 96% more vulnerabilities. Uh, in terms of future work, 
Uh, we're aiming to add more vulnerability types to Letterbomb and also uh, use these generated exploits as information to automatically uh, repair <coughs> vulnerabilities. Um, and also, uh, since we're researchers here, uh, at least uh, a good amount of us, um, uh, we pride ourselves in being able to produce replicable, replicable reproducible results. Um, one of the challenges is actually releasing a tool like this, which if, get, if it gets into the wrong hands, you can easily convert this so that you can deploy a botnet that like attacks like all the apps in this room, for example. And so um, uh, <coughs> if you're interested in this, let us know. Uh, I'd like to uh, give credit to the other people working on this project, um, Mahmoud, Nagar, and Sam. And thank you very much for your time and attention. We have time for a couple of questions. Yes. Just, just a forward reference. Are you working with someone at IBM, IBM Research? Anywhere? So um, <coughs> we're not working with someone at IBM Research, but we we did uh, uh, contact some of the people uh, who who worked on that tool to just try to get some more information about the tool, about how to use it, about um, any issues we might run into. Actually. They stopped responding to us at one point. <laughs> so I, maybe that's okay. something we talk about offline. <laughs> let, let, let's do that because it seems like you should be. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. How far is an approach like yours away from commercialization? Uh, that's a good question. Um, it's, I mean, it's definitely something we can commercialize, uh, but that's not necessarily something I can decide on my own. I mean, we do work at a university. Um, I'm, I'm a postdoc, so I'm not, I'm not a professor here. Uh, the principal investigator here would have to make those decisions as well. So, uh, in fact, we can talk more about that offline if you'd like. <laughs> my, my decision is that needs to start a company and lead it. Major <laughs> 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 shareholder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a perfect answer. Now is the subject for next year's presentation, how to get venture capitalists. <laughs> <laughs>